What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the tools that I use most in my SketchUp modeling workflow, the flip tool. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna talk about a lot of things you need to know when working with the flip tool, but stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you my workflow for using this to create a cabinet and how it saves me like a ton of time. So make sure you stick around for that, but let's talk through some of the fundamentals of the flip tool real quick. So um, for those of you that don't remember, the flip tool was added, I think, in SketchUp 2022 or 2023, and it's basically a tool where you can activate an object, then activate the flip tool by clicking on the icon, and you can flip an object. Notice how when you pop this up, you get all these colorful little planes in here. And so when you click on these planes, the object is flipped across whatever plane you have selected, right? So it's really easy or really helpful for flipping objects in place like this. And so that by itself is helpful, but not necessarily super interesting, right? So let's get a little further into some of the other things that you can do with this tool. So first off, when you select an object and you activate this tool, so say that I was to take this object right here, we're gonna throw it in a group, but when I activate the tool, Right now, if I click, notice how it's flipping it across the middle of this object. Well, one of the things you can do with these planes is you can click and drag the planes like this. And so what that means is that means when you activate this tool, you can adjust what the object flips along. So whatever that plane is or whatever that plane location is, that's going to affect the flip of the object like this. And by the way, if you ever drag a plane and then you start dragging it again, things start getting a little bit weird. So um, usually what I want you to do is when you drag a plane, just restart that tool in order to reset that drag functionality like this. But not only can you drag planes, you can also create copies. And so the way that that's going to work is remember how with the move tool, you can tap the M key and then tap the control key with the tool active to create a copy. Well, it works the same way with the flip tool. So what I mean is when I activate the flip tool, notice how if you tap the control key, you get a little plus icon right here. When you get that plus icon, what that means is that means that you're going to have the ability to create a copy of the object that you had in here rather than flipping the object you had selected. And that is not only helpful for situations like this one, because I think a lot of people um, think, why would I model half of a table? There's other tools to do that. Where this gets really valuable is things like this shelf, because instead of, so let's say that I have a gap off the edge of this object, right? So say that this is supposed to be, um, this frame is supposed to be three inches off of the edge over here. Now it gets a little bit tricky trying to space an object off of an edge right here. Now you could move it over with the copy tool and then type in three inches and move it like this, but it's going to be a lot easier because this object is symmetrical. You can just take the flip tool, you could click and drag it to the midpoint of this object and tap the control key. And what that does is that creates a copy that's going to have the same distance on one end as the other end. And so that can start saving you a ton of time when it comes to creating objects that are spaced off of endpoints like this. So um, I use this a ton for that kind of thing. And so now let's talk a little bit about the axis orientation of these objects. That's going to be helpful because when you're working with an object like this one, right? Notice what I've got in here is I've got a pair of swings. Well, the problem with these swings right now is if I activate the flip tool like this, I can flip them, but I'm going to be able to flip them in these directions right here. Well, these directions don't really help me in the situation where I might want to flip this across a vertical axis like this. Well, you might have noticed when you activate this tool, there's an option down here for toggle global and local axes. What that means is that means if I tap the Alt key, notice how these axes are going to align either with the object you have selected and that object's axes right here, or with the global axes, which are going to be associated with these axes right here. Those are the axes for the entire model. So. What happens is, say that I select this object right here, I activate the flip tool, then I tap the Alt key. Well, what that's gonna do is that's going to align that with my global axes. Well, then I could use this to flip this object right here really quickly. So now I have a flip plane that allows me to flip 
this direction. And so that can make this a lot easier to work with for objects that aren't necessarily on those typical axes like this. Okay, and so now say that we're gonna take an object like this one. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna add some notches in here. And this is where I'm gonna talk about a bonus tool called S4U Offset. I will link to a video about S4U Offset, but it's basically a tool that is a more powerful version of the offset tool. And what it does is it allows you to offset an object in two directions. And it also allows you to offset individual edges at the same time. So I can, for example, offset these in by six inches just by typing in six inches and hitting the enter key. And notice how this offset both edges at the same time. So that's kind of a bonus tool. I'll uh, try to remember to link to a video about that, but I use it for situations like this one all the time where maybe I wanna create some guides in here like this, but then I can use this in order to quickly create a reset, but that's a lot faster when I can do that, uh, when I can do that double edged offset in that direction. But say that you've got a shape like this one and you want to mirror this shape, right? You want to create something where this is mirrored. But at the moment, if I activate this tool right here, notice how none of the axis directions really help us, right? Even if we tap the alt key or whatever, this isn't giving us anything that we can flip across in here in order to create additional copies. Well, what you can do is you can mouse over a face like this one. So notice when I mouse over the face, I'm getting a colored rectangle on these faces right here. And notice how it's only gonna work on these flat faces. So in this case, it's picking up these individual faces that make up this curve. But if I click on this, it's going to create a plane that's going to be aligned with whatever face I've moused over. Right? So when I activate this tool, say I wanna flip this along this direction, I can tap the control key, mouse over here, and then click in order to create a copy of this, like this. Then we can do the same thing over here. Mouse over this face, like this, and start creating other copies in here. So by using the align to face function where you mouse over a face, like this. This gives you a lot more options for ways that you can mirror things in SketchUp. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about my workflow and the way that this works. Cause I've been using this a ton for the new cabinet module that I'm adding to the SketchUp Essentials course. And basically the way that I use this is I use it a ton for the placement of cabinet doors because I've got these cabinet doors in here, right? And most of the time you just wanna model one door. Well, those doors are gonna have a little bit of an inset here and even like a different inset here. So these have uniform gaps. Well, what I do is I just use the flip tool. I just click in here and I drag it and I can just tap control and I can find the midpoint of this object. Well, when I find the midpoint of the object in here, this is going to flip this and it creates this perfect cabinet door with the same spacing from the end as we have over here because we're using the symmetry, the object. Not only do I use this for creating things like uh, the cabinet doors, I also use it for placing hardware. So for example, I might place a piece of hardware on one door and then I can use that same function in order to do the same thing over here. And that's gonna work for cabinet hardware like this as well. It doesn't really matter what the shape is because at pretty much all times we're making this symmetrical, right? So we're gonna flip this across this middle point right here. And so practically what that might look like is say that I've got a cabinet door like this one, I might select both the cabinet door and the drawer face right here. I might drag those over like this. I might select a corner right here in order to place this. And then I might use the flip tool again in order to place this aligned with the other edge like this. So once you get really good with the flip tool, it actually saves you a ton of time working in SketchUp. All right, so I'd love to hear from you. Are you using the flip tool yet? A lot of people used to use the scale tool and just never kind of got into it. It took me a while, but now I'm absolutely loving it. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below if you're using this tool. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.